Hey there, this video is about doing a hundred thousand things. Um, it's really about building software that can handle a large number of tasks, but uh, it won't talk, it, at least in the beginning, in terms of software. So just imagine what if you had a thousand things to do? Like your to do is full of things. You have. Uh, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to be there, you have to be here, everything. What if you had a thousand things to do? So the first thing you would, if you're smart, ask is, can I delegate this to a thousand people? Like if thousand people can do thousand things, that is one each, and uh, it can all be done uh, as fast as it can be done, right? I mean, of course, sometimes it might not be as fast uh, with uh, managing thousand people, but nevertheless, we can delegate it. That's one thing that would, we would immediately think about. But then what if I told you that you had to do it by yourself? Like you are the only person who can do this and that you have to do it. Well, then you start asking how many hands do I have? How much time do I have? Uh, am I a slave or what? So all these things, right? So that's a bit about how large number of tasks can be done in any system. Imagine a train just comes to a station and uh, this is the last station. So let's say this is the Bangalore Mysore Express. So as it reaches Mysore, around 200, 300 people get out of the train. And then all of these people now have to leave the railway station to their homes, right? So everyone has a, has a small trip to make. Let's say half of them are taking the auto rickshaws. So they have to now go to their homes in an auto rickshaw. So how, how, how does it happen in real life? You do them all at once. So there are like 100 auto rickshaws waiting outside my railway station. And they all take uh, one passenger or one family each and they go to their respective homes. So that's an example of doing all of them at once. But then in the same situation, uh, there's this prepaid auto taxi stand uh, right outside Mysore uh, railway station. So if you were to go there, uh, there's a person who is uh, supposed to give you a small ticket which tells how much you have to pay the auto driver. So there's a long queue for this. And uh, only one person can get a ticket at a time and they will be assigned an auto immediately and this uh, whole thing happens uh, one by one one after the other so um, of course you can do a mix of both of these and that's what uh, this video is going to be mostly about uh, but uh, that's all we can do right if you think about it you can either do everything at once or you can do one after the other, uh, or you you a mix of both. The, pretty much these are the only three ways uh, you can do a large number of tasks. Now, if you do everything at once, there's a term for it, it's called parallelization. So basically, the, the, the approach you're following is uh, running multiple things simultaneously or in parallel. In, in the case of uh, auto rickshaws, driving, many people home at the same time uh, it's happening in parallel so um, I mean there are many ways to do things at parallel in parallel um, uh, within JavaScript for example you might use a map over, a, over an array which is uh, I mean there is no way to truly do things parallel in JavaScript uh, unless you go into multiple threads or multiple processes but nevertheless, uh, uh, we can think of that as doing that, doing this in parallel. Similarly, uh, um, if you had a language like Java, you would think about running multiple threads. Or if you if you uh, want to do it, if if the processes, if the work that you want to do, tasks that you want to do, are resource intensive, you might run it on a platform like AWS Lambda or serverless or functions or whatever uh, wherein you are able to uh, run multiple 
multiple thousand computers at once uh, to do the same task. Now, the other style of doing it, doing them one by one, is called sequential or uh, simply put queue. It's a, just like the uh, auto taxi stand, uh, there's a queue of people waiting for the auto. So, a queue uh, is uh, really simple. Uh, there is, uh, there's only one way to do a queue, which is you iterate over a queue. You have to start from one end, uh, you pick the first one and then you go to the second one and then you go to the third one and then you go to the fourth one. Um, I mean, you could do this with a for loop, you could do this with uh, a while loop or you can do any kind of fancy iterators over an array or a list. Now, uh, one one additional uh, complexity with which uh, with what we could consider in this is whether we need uh, the the status of a queue to be persisted in a database, or whether we need to use uh, a database-backed queue. So that's uh, that's another detail that might uh, uh, be relevant there. So let's look at the parallel and sequential approach and the pros and cons. So if you if you do things uh, parallelly, if you want to like completely parallelize, if you want to run hundred thousand AWS servers, then of course you're gonna use too much resources, right? Uh, every uh, for for the uh, if you have n tasks, you would need n n into x uh, the amount of resources. So uh, at the same, uh, on the other hand, sequential doesn't need that much resources, but it can require uh, n into x time. So if if it takes x time to do one task, it will take n number of tasks multiplied by x time. So n into x time to finish tasks when you are doing it in sequential. So parallel will finish that in x time, uh, but uh, parallel will take n into x resources, whereas sequential will finish that in uh, uh, n into x time while taking x resources. So that's the uh, uh, resource time uh, trade trade-off between parallel and sequential. On the other hand, uh, there's another trade-off, which is if your task requires uh, a downstream component to further process after the result of your task, for example, maybe passed on to a third-party API, or a, let's say you're building an SMS service. So if you have 100,000 messages coming in and you're calling an SMS provider, and let's say this provider is only able to handle uh, say 200 messages at a time. Uh, they don't have a bulk API, you have to send them 200 at a time. So if that's the case, uh, then again, uh, you are putting a performance pressure on the downstream services if you're doing these 100,000 requests in parallel because you can't send 100,000 to the downstream provider. Now, if you're doing sequentially, uh, you will be underutilizing these downstream services. So if you're doing one after the other uh, and your downstream service can actually handle 200 at a time, then you're wasting 199 every every time that you're passing this on to the uh, downstream service. So uh, thinking about uh, this, uh, what is a middle ground? The middle ground is the doing both approach. So mix of uh, parallel and sequential. Now. Uh, there are two ways to do this. One is batch processes from within a queue. So there's one queue, of, uh, single queue for all the uh, tasks and uh, you take uh, a batch. So you decide the size of this batch based on how much resources you have available and the capacity of downstream API. So in this particular case, if you have a downstream API that's, uh, that's able to process 200 requests uh, at a time, and um, your uh, system resource constraint is not at all a problem, then maybe the size of the batch would be 200. So you take 200 out of the queue and then you parallelly process them. So you, let's say you want to make some transformations uh, uh, to the message and then uh, you send them off to the uh, downstream API and then you proceed to the next 200 and the next 200 till the queue is empty. 
So uh, this uh, batch processing from a single queue is useful if your whole pipeline of how the data flows is a simple linear process uh, and it, it, all the data flow follows the same kind of uh, pipeline. Uh, on the other hand, you can have parallel queues. Uh, this is slightly more complicated and I've, I've not really used them a lot. Uh, basically, this is uh, similar. I mean, if you think about it, it's almost the same, but in here, instead of doing a batch processing from a single queue, you have multiple queues and the number of queues is uh, similar to the batch size earlier. The number of queues here would be based on the resources available and the capacity of downstream APIs. And then uh, you distribute the tasks to each queue and uh, in e within each queue, tasks are processed sequentially one by one. So this is really useful uh, if different tasks follow different flows or if you, uh, if you don't need to bulk the, uh, I mean, process uh, things in, in bulk. So things like uh, video conversions to format conversions or um, uh, workflows which uh, basically take on a different life once they're processed. So uh, that's all that to, there is to it, but um, how do we implement this? So we only need to think about how to implement two things. One, how to implement a queue and how to implement uh, parallel processing. So. Uh, and then we mix and match the same concepts. So, what is a queue? A queue is just a, a, just a, a, a data structure where uh, you have things coming one after the other. So, uh, an array or list is a queue. Um, you can even have a, a database, also a relational database is most definitely a queue because it's a list of records. Uh, and uh, there are certain databases that are optimized to perform like a queue. So uh, RabbitMQ or Redis uh, with the queue uh, feature. All of these can, uh, these are databases with uh, you know, queue feature built in as a first class uh, feature. So they can do things like uh, uh, you can issue pop and you get one. Uh, one uh, element out of the database uh, and things like that. So the only difference between array uh, between storing this uh, in an array and in a database is that a database is persistent and an array would be in memory. So uh, if you have really long running processes and uh, uh, you're processing it all in memory, then there's a high chance that if your system crashes or it goes for reshot or something happens, uh, there is a chance that your entire uh, tasks uh, and their status is, uh, are all gone. Whereas, if you save a queue in a database, or uh, if a queue is persisted, then uh, of course you can uh, begin from where you left off or where you stop the processing. So that's the advantage of using a database uh, for queue. Now, when it comes to parallel processing, uh, again uh, there are. Uh, the, it's as simple as using a map or a parallel stream within memory uh, within the language. So JavaScript has map or uh, Java has parallel stream. Uh, I'm sure uh, all languages have some sort of parallel processing abstraction. I mean, even if it's not actual parallel processing on the system, there's an abstraction that allows you to process things in parallel. Um, and if we want to go another level higher, it would be multi-threading or worker processes. So where a, where um, you would uh, have um, uh, a software that allows you to run multiple processes, uh, uh, which are called worker processes or job job processes, which uh, execute the same task, uh, uh, but on multiple threads now because you're running multiple processes. And uh, if you take this to the extreme, you of course have horizontal scaling option wherein uh, you are essentially running multiple computers uh, for higher number of threads. So you will have uh, uh, things like serverless or functions, step functions, AWS, GCP, all of these uh, platforms and their features. So that's all there is to it. Uh, I'll leave, leave you with that, uh, with the code that just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should uh, do, do it. So please be, um, uh, very very careful when uh, 
thinking about the architecture of whatever you're building and see what you really need and compare the trade-offs and build accordingly. Thank you.